Hey, Pastor Steve here. And today what I'm going to be talking a little bit about is PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. And I thought that it might be a good thing to talk about because this evening at Friendship Church at 7 o'clock, we are going to be discussing this with our Celebrate Recovery group. It's a really good topic and I know that you'll get something out of it if you plan on attending. Let me tell you just a little bit about my background. I have a background as a Marine Corps infantryman for about four years, and then I transitioned into the Army as a forward observer. During my time in the Army, I spent 23 years, and I finished up as a first sergeant. My final, my final time as a first sergeant, I went to Baghdad with about 120 men, and we were assigned a sector right in downtown Baghdad. It was very interesting, and we went through a lot of things. We were an artillery unit, but my background is in infantryman and as a forward observer, I was able to help lead my, my team through all the different things that they went through. And when we finished up, we had over 68 Purple Hearts, but we also had seven awards for valor. Did you know those seven awards for valor, what happened was is that six of them I had to actually kick out of the Army. And I wasn't aware of what was going on. I didn't know about PTSD at the time. I didn't know how, how it worked, what was actually going on. But what I learned was is that there are two primary reasons for post-traumatic stress disorder. Did you know that? Well, the first one is, is a chemical imbalance caused by adrenaline that's dumped into our system. And what happens is, is that adrenaline gets into our system and it causes us to act um, in different ways. It, it triggers our fight or flight mechanism and it's a way that our bodies have been designed to, to, um, to be able to protect itself. And what happens is, is that as the as adrenaline is dumped into our bodies, everything goes directly to our primary organs and our ability to be able to fight and or run from whatever it is. And that's what happens is, is that everything goes into slow motion and it's, it's very, very interesting. And if you haven't been shot at or if you haven't gone through this, you might not know what I'm talking about. And the best way that I can really describe it is like being in the matrix. Everything goes into super slow motion you can almost hear the bullets whizzing by. In the five different firefights that I was in, it was definitely a different experience. So I know that I've been exposed to that. And what happens is, is that as that adrenaline goes into your system, your body gets used to it. And you start craving this more and more. And that was the problem that I had with a lot of my soldiers. They went through and they had all kinds of issues when they got back to Germany. It was, they wanted to tear things apart. They wanted to do crazy things. They did things they had never done before. And it was all based off of this desire for adrenaline. And there's not really any cure for it. And what you really have to do is you really have to set your mind against this. And even that doesn't work in some occasions. But we're going to talk a little bit about that and why I was able to overcome it just by following a couple of simple instincts. Now, there's another thing that actually causes PTSD, and it's even worse, and that's guilt. Now, that isn't, it's not exactly what you think of. When you run into guilt, what happens is, is that you, you feel bad because you're not there with your soldiers, uh, with the soldiers that are out there. You're not in combat, but you're there in combat, if you know what I mean. Most of the people that I've had problems with as far as guilt goes, they're all of our people that ran our operations center, they're all the guys that were our supply specialists. They're all the people who had all these different issues in different realms, but not in relationship to combat. They never had that rush of adrenaline, but they wish that they did. And what happened is, is that these guys, they actually went out and they killed themselves. And I've got a lot more stories about um, my soldiers who would commit suicide because they felt so bad about some of these things that are going on. This is even more difficult to treat because it's more of a psychological issue than a physical issue. So you try and treat psychological issues with physical issues and sometimes that just doesn't work. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to address some of these things biblically and I wanted to talk a little bit about PTSD and, and I'll do a lot more of this when we get to um, the Celebrate Recovery uh, program tonight at 7 o'clock. I encourage you to come. I'll be able to answer your question and I'll, I'll cover this in a lot more detail. But I want you to see this. This is 1 Peter 1:13, and it says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. You see, God has given us minds to be able to use. And if we look at our minds in depth, and we look at the power of what the human brain is able to do, you know, we only use about 10% of our brain. Well, actually, that's not true. 
What we actually do is we use all of our brain, but 10% of it is where we reason, where we think about things, where we can actually make a difference in what we think is going on in our lives. The other 90% is running our body. It's what's programmed into our minds, it's what's programmed into our lives. And what's happened is, is that with PTSD, these things have been programmed into our mind. Now the way that that's happened is, is that there are traumatic events and you remember traumatic events. Every one of the firefights that I was in, I can remember explicitly what was going on and how it was happening. But I don't really remember the last time that I went to the bathroom, if you think about it. So what happens is, is that this gets programmed in from our neocortex and it goes in and it changes our minds and it starts programming our minds to say, hey, wait a second, my body says, I, I need this adrenaline rush. What's happening is, is that my adrenaline is actually changing my body. It's giving me heart problems. It's giving me um, different issues with my telomeres and the DNA that's in my body. It changes the way that my body reacts to things. If I'm constantly in fight or flight, then my body is going to begin deteriorating and I'm going to die at an early age and I'm going to start having issues. And all those issues fall right in line with, yes, PTSD. So if you look at those things, then you can start saying, wait a second, if my mind is prepared for action, how can I possibly change the way that I think? Well, the Bible provides us with that answer. But let me share this with you. This is Proverbs 23, 7. It says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. You see, our body actually tells our mind what's going on. It's saying, I need that adrenaline rush. So we have a bad dream, or we have a flashback, or we have something that actually instigates this. Or we go out and we do something stupid or we do something crazy to try and get that adrenaline rush going again. And that's our body telling our mind, hey, I'm in charge and this is what I want. Well, Proverbs 23, 7 tells us the exact opposite. If I can think in my heart about something, then, and if I can focus on those things, then my mind is telling my body what to think. And if my mind is that powerful, at least in my subconscious, then what I need to do is I need to program my subconscious to be able to start living my life the way that I know that I can and know that I want to. Well, the Bible is one of the best ways to do that. And we have different ways that we can program our mind, and I'll talk a lot about that tonight. But if I can reprogram my mind away from these things where my body is in charge, instead my mind is in charge, now all of a sudden I can deal with PTSD very simply and very easily. And, and for that matter, I can deal with a lot of other things. It doesn't just have to deal with PTSD. But if your life is all screwed up, then what, what's happening is, is that our lives are just a little bit on the uh, negative side of things, and it's because of the way that we program our minds. Just for example, let me ask you this. Before you go to bed at night, what's the last thing you do? You check your Facebook and your Instagram and see how many likes and how many people are following you and who's doing what and who's doing these things, and what is that doing to your body? Well, it's actually instigating that fight or flight because the same thing's happening. You feel a heart blood rushing to your heart, you have all these things, all of the things where your body needs to have this rest and recovery is being changed because that's what we're doing, we're picking up our phone right before we go to sleep. So the same thing happens when we wake up in the morning, right? We go right to reading the Bible, we go right to work, or do some of us up, pick up the phone, and we start saying, hey, I wonder how many people like me over the course of the evening. I wonder how many people actually like what I put on, on the internet. So if we start doing that, what happens is, is that our minds start getting programmed. So what we want to do is we want to take this opportunity to reprogram our minds and to reprogram our subconscious. Because the things that you do with your subconscious are things like chewing and eating, chewing gum, walking up steps, um, digesting food, um, your heart beating, the breathing in and out. We do all these things without thinking because our subconscious mind is doing it for us. Well, the human heart can actually program my subconscious mind by taking my feelings and my emotions, which are much stronger than what's happening in the front part of my mind. If I can take those and start programming that into my heart, now all of a sudden I can change things. So what happens is, is that rather than cortisol being dumped into my body, if I start loving other people, if I start caring for other people, then all of a sudden I'm producing serotonin. And did you know that serotonin is the only drug that they found to be able to deal with PTSD? So if you keep that in mind, then it's gonna, it's gonna totally transform this whole thing. If I can get my own natural serotonin to do this, then all of a sudden I can start living the way that God called me to live. 
You know, in Romans 8, 6, it tells us this. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting your spirit control your mind leads to life and to peace. Now, if we understand that, then what happens is, is that I can start focusing on the spirit and check this out. The fruit of the spirit actually produces serotonin in my life and prevents cortisol from being dumped in. It actually prevents this whole thing from me um, destroying my body through these different things that PTSD demands. Well, if I can live in the spirit, then all of a sudden it changes things. And let me share, you, share this with you. So the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. And those are the things that are the fruit of the spirit. All of those things actually produce serotonin in your life if you can live in them. So if you can find a way to live in the spirit, then you're going to start being able to overcome this whole PTSD thing. So Romans 12, 2 says, we shouldn't copy the customs and behaviors of this world, but we should allow God to transform us into a new person. And the way that he can do that is, is by changing the way that we think. Then we will know that it's God's will for us, and we know what's good and pleasing and perfect for us. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through we'll have a couple different exercises, a couple of things that we'll look at tonight where we can start changing the way that we think. We start changing these things that we see. Now, the biggest thing that I can do is I can forget about the past and I can start looking forward to the future. Did you know that you have almost 60,000 thoughts a day? That's right, 60,000 thoughts every single day. Now, you may not be aware of them, but these thoughts are, they're programming our minds, they're doing the things to our bodies that either we want them to do or what we don't want them to do. So here's the really, the real tragic thing about all of that. If we have 60,000 thoughts a day, did you know that about 95% of those thoughts are the same thoughts that we had yesterday? You know what that means? Tomorrow, you're going to have the same 90, 95,000 thoughts, or 95% thoughts that you had today. Your life will not change if you maintain this same thought process. But if I can forget about the past and start looking forward to the future, now all of a sudden I can start looking forward to what it is that God has in store for me. You know, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says this. Do not remember the former things, nor consider things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God's promises that he's going to change things for our future. Why would we look on the past? Because, you know, we'll make up our own past. And a lot of us will say, hey, you know what happened in my past? This, 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 and this. And if we actually go back and look at it, I want you to ask yourself a question. Did it really happen? Because you know, about 58 to 60 percent of the things that we think happened in our past didn't really happen. They happened in our mind. And our body doesn't know the difference. So our body reacts in the same way as if it had actually happened. What if you were to take that and turn that around, and then you start looking forward to the future and you start saying, wait, I have a bright future. Wait, this is what I'm going to do. And you start looking forward to good, positive things, those things that are going to make a difference in your life, Rather than saying, well, tomorrow's going to be the same way it was yesterday. If you run into that, then look on the positive aspect of things. And that's what God really wants us to do. He wants us to succeed and not to fail. You know, Paul writes to the church in Philippi, and he says this. This is Philippians 3, 13 and 14. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. God has got a plan for you. He's got a plan that's set up ahead of time. And if you start looking forward to this in the future, forgetting about all these things that happened in the past, forget about your glory days in the Marine Corps and storming the beach and, you know, Fallujah and all these things that we go through, all these things that are instigating these negative aspects in our lives, forget about those and start looking forward to the future. Start seeing a bright and possible future and you'll start changing the way that you think. And I can guarantee you that it'll make a huge difference for you. And I want to leave you with this one thought. And that's 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. So either the Bible is true or it isn't. Either you're a new creation or you're not. So why not think of yourself as this new creation? And the more that you do that, the more you're going to start seeing that your life will change in a positive way. Well, I encourage you to share this on Facebook to every veteran that you know. It may help them. I know that I'm going to, I'm going to try and tag as many of my friends on here as well. 
Now, also, if you live in the San Antonio area, join us tonight at 7 o'clock. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about PTSD, and we're going to talk about the way that our bodies react to it. I really encourage you to join us tonight at 7 o'clock. It's at Friendship Church at 14015 San Pedro Avenue. Why not consider joining us? It'll change the way that you think. Well, God bless you, and I hope to hear from each and every one of you.